What's up guys, so we are back again with our little laptop from Dell. This is the Dell Latitude 3190. It was never designed for gaming, it was actually designed for the educational space. And in our previous video, we showed you how lackluster it really was. This kind of laptop is so cheaply put together, they are designed to, to be technically thrown away at some point, but hopefully we've saved it from the tip because I've been making some changes to this and it's actually pretty good now. Now, for those of you that watched our previous video, you will remember this laptop here. This is the Dell Latitude 3190. It is a system that wasn't designed for home use or gaming. It was actually designed for the educational space. And that means that Dell will put together the most cheapest, nastiest kind of system sell it to colleges, schools and universities in the hundreds and thousands for them to kind of rack into the systems where they'll be charged and updated. And then they'll lend them out to students and things to do research, watch videos, that kind of stuff. I suppose for its time, it would have been fine for that. But over the years, they've extremely slowed down and that's because they've made them so cheap. You can't really do much with them after that point. This system would have actually officially supported Windows 10 when it was created and it does support Windows 11 as well. The CPU allows for that. But but they are extremely bloated and won't run very well at all. On the external side of it, it's got a very cheap monitor. If you turn it left to right, you can't really see the screen. You have to be looking at it dead on. The keyboard is very weak and it does miss keys out if you're typing too fast, which makes entering a password quickly very difficult. And then the plastic that they've used is extremely cheap. It becomes very, very brittle very quickly and it kind of gets cracks over the unit without you doing too much. We've got a crack here on the bezel to the monitor and we've also got a few cracks around some of the screws on the bottom where they've been inserted too tight and to be honest, that kind of cheapness flows into the hardware they've used as well because they've made it so unupgradable that they just basically want you to throw them away after a couple of years. For the CPU, we have the Intel Celeron N4120. It is okay, a four core, full thread processor that does support Windows 11, but it is extremely weak and it is only passively cooled. I suppose that does give us a little bonus in the system because it is super silent, but trying to run applications or anything heavy is, is really difficult to do. For RAM, they've only provided four gigabytes of DDR4 and that is a single channel and it is soldered to the motherboard. So there's no way of upgrading it. They've provided no additional slots, no way of taking it out. And that also flows over to the storage they've used as well. The storage in this system is a very low volume of 64 gigabytes and it is only running on an eMMC, which means it's quite slow. The volume's very low and they've also soldered that to the motherboard as well. They've provided no additional NVMe slots or SATA ports and to be honest, they haven't even kind of included any extra micro SD slots, so you can't expand on it either. In actual fact, if you open up this unit, you can see how cheaply they've gone because it does have the solder points for an NVMe slot and the little stand as well for the NVMe card to sit on, but they haven't actually soldered a connection on. That is a real shame for this unit because if they had have just put that connection on, you would be able to upgrade the storage quite easily and it would have been a little bit more useful. But of course, because we can't upgrade anything in this system, we can't really change anything out. The only thing we can change is the software it uses. And I've been playing with a few things and I think I've got this unit working really well. So let's take a look at what I've done. Okay, so we've hooked up the little laptop to the big screen so you guys can see a little bit easier. And of course, when it comes to changing software, the first thing that you need to get rid of is the bloatware called Windows. Windows just takes up too much space on this laptop and it runs extremely slow. Even if it was Windows 10, it wouldn't make no difference. Just clicking on things, there was a delay and a lot of that is down to the, the hardware setup inside, but of course also how demanding Windows is. So the first thing that we need to change is Windows itself. There are many different Linux based distributions out there and it's very difficult sometimes to pick which one you want. The, my first thoughts because we were building this as a gaming system was to use something like emulation and of course going for something like Batasera would make sense but again Batasera is quite bloated and takes up too much space it wouldn't leave us a lot for ROMs and BIOSes and things like that so I took a look at a system called Lacquer now Lacquer is a much more lightweight version of Batasera basically it is a controller based GUI system that will allow you to have multiple different consoles in emulation but then we would lose the normal desktop functionality like browsing the internet and making files and stuff like that. I then thought why not go to something like Ubuntu. I'm very used to Ubuntu so it would make sense for me to do that but again 
even Ubuntu in its latest versions are quite bloated and we'd have to do a lot of work to be able to get things running and stuff like that because it doesn't really come with a lot built in, particularly for gaming. So then I listened to you guys' recommendations really and I decided to go for Linux Mint. For anybody that hasn't used Linux Mint before, it will give you the closest Windows experience as a Linux based environment would do. And it also is branched off of the Ubuntu. So for people like me that are used to Ubuntu, in the background, I can still get those jobs done. But if I'm honest, I haven't actually had to do anything at all, really. All we did was just install the system very quickly using a USB stick. The installation process is very quick. It doesn't scrape as much data. It doesn't ask you so many questions. And once it gets running, it pretty much found everything. We got the graphics drivers, the audio drivers, the Wi-Fi drivers, all of them installed perfectly fine with no issues. We managed to get up and running within about 10 minutes. So that is a good win for this kind of operating system. It's also extremely fast. When you're inside the operating system here, you can click things and they are pretty instant. We of course can flow for our file system. We can also go onto the internet using the built-in browser, which is Firefox, which is a pretty decent browser. Everything seems to run perfectly fine. It's, it's much more snappier than Windows itself. And they've built so much into it in terms of how you install applications and things. I've never actually had to go to the hacker screen to install anything. And I've got some actual games running on this system too. The first thing you will need to do is of course, install Steam and it's very easy to do on here. All we need to do is go into our applications folder, search for the software manager. This will give you access to all of the things that are available on a very quick one click install which a lot of Linux distributions do come with nowadays, but this one seems a lot more fully fledged. Type into the top box Steam and we will instantly find Steam in the corner here. Double click on that and it will open up the, the kind of menu that tells you all about the application. And there is a little box in the top here that says install. Click that, it will just install straight to the operating system no terminals, no hacker screens, no nothing like that. And it works beautifully fine too. You can also remove the application up here by hitting the remove button once you've installed it. So it will clear it down very well as well. So I don't think you can get much easier than that. So we'll close that now and we'll just pop over to Steam. Steam runs beautifully fine on this system. It is very quick. You can pretty much install all of your games. But one of the issues that we got with the previous system and one of the most biggest surprises when we were actually trying to test games on it was Half-Life 1. Now, Half-Life 1 will run very well on most hardware, but for some reason on this system, it run very poorly. Even running it in a low setting with a resolution of 1366 by 768, which is the kind of native resolution for this laptop, we could only seem to manage to achieve around 40 frames per second on average. And there were some stutters now and again, which didn't really take away from the gameplay, but it wasn't a great experience. On this new system though, playing Half-Life 1, we can actually set the settings to a reasonable and a modest medium while running it in the same resolution and we can achieve over 100 frames per second and the game is super smooth. I was very surprised by the result of that because I thought that we would at least get a like for like kind of performance or maybe even we would start to achieve 60 frames per second because of the optimizations Valve have done on that game for Linux but no I was sh hugely surprised. So surprised in fact I think this time we're going to try Half-Life 2. Now I did try Half-Life 2 on the previous system running Windows and it would start but the experience was really bad. When you actually got into game, it was a complete stutter fest. It was, you were talking single digit kind of performance there where as you started the game, it was like, welcome to city 17 kind of thing. So it was completely unplayable, but let's see how playable it is on this system. So Half-Life 2 has started and we're now in game and we're not looking too bad actually. We're currently getting 60 frames per second, which is way better than what the other system was getting. But we'll head over to the settings and see what we've got configured. Under our video settings, we are currently running in a native 1280 by 720. That is probably because we are outputting to this monitor, but it's a very similar resolution anyway. We'll go over to advanced here and we'll just double check. So we've got everything pretty much set to a medium, no anti-analyzing, the filtering mode is on trilinear. So it's not the greatest settings here, but we have got weight for vertical sync enabled. We're gonna disable that for now to see what the maximum performance we can get is. And we'll save those settings and return back to game. We're now currently getting around 98 over 100 frames per second so this is actually a much better performance and the system is completely silent while doing this our temperatures are probably not too bad actually just because of the way that the system is designed but 
Now and again, we're getting a little stutter as we kind of go through new sections, but overall, this is actually playing beautifully fine. Let's jump out of the little boat thing and we'll run into this little hut. We'll do a bit of moving around, find some enemies. So far, we are now getting around 75 frames per second. There's no 1% low on this reader at the moment, but everything is looking pretty good. We've got quite a bit of a dip there when we ran around the corner. So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll head back over to the settings. We want to just smoothen that out a little bit and we're going to turn on vertical sync again. That should just basically glue us to 60 frames per second, which it has in the corner. And we'll see if there's any stuttering after that. Got some enemies in here and we've got some physics on the go. We had a little stutter there when that barrel kind of went past us, but it doesn't take away from the experience, that kind of stuff. We'll just kill these guys and then we'll get around. So if you turn really quick, we do get a little stutter, but so far the game is actually running beautifully fine. I mean, you can get away with playing this game at these settings and at this performance. So Linux has just made a complete difference to this system. It's kind of brought it out from back from the dead, really, because this game just simply wouldn't give you any type of decent experience before. But now we can easily play it. So this is an absolute win now. Linux is saving our system from the tip. And it's just a great thing to see. Now, of course, installing Steam and some games will take up a lot of the storage on the device and you don't have a lot to play with, so you have to be careful. I think this would be perfect for playing old games like Half-Life 1, um, Opposing Force, Blue Shift, those kind of stuff, and maybe some other older games, but they will play beautifully fine on it, so you can get away with it if you want to do that kind of stuff. It means that the laptop now is a system that you can take with you. You can still use it for learning, normal internet type stuff, and you can play a little bit of old school gaming too. One of the other things that I did install in this system was I wanted to actually get it doing some emulation too and I found a great system for that. Again, going to our software manager, it's very easy to install this. We basically want to search for an application called Retro Deck. Now, this is an emulation software that provides you with a fully controller based UI and it's technically designed for the Steam Deck, but it will work on laptops. They've actually, to show you here on the picture here, they've designed it to work on laptops as well. It's very, very lightweight and it works beautifully fine. I've already installed it. Again, it's a one click install. So let's launch that system and show you what's inside of that one. We will need to get a controller though because it's a bit of a pain in the book to uh, navigate around once you've got a keyboard and mouse but let's see what kind of games we can emulate now i've got my trusty controller from xbox here, which is one i really like to use and it is cabled in via usb the system picks it up perfectly fine the system also supports bluetooth so you could connect it via bluetooth if i had any batteries to be able to do that but at the moment i don't inside retro deck you can see that we've got a bunch of systems here listed i've actually given this ui a little bit of a cleanup because you tend to get your favorites and stuff like that you can leave them on if you want to but we've actually got some pretty decent systems here we've got the nintendo entertainment system we've got the mega drive there's quite a few games in the mega drive one actually so let's go find one to play and see what happens i think uh batman maybe batman the video game that's a pretty cool game it takes a few seconds to actually launch these and these are very small games anyway and they so far work perfectly fine i've had absolutely no issues with this we'll just skip through a little bit see if we can get into the game um, for older systems like this, you will get the uh, standard 4x3 kind of interface, although sometimes they will stretch out nicely like this one has. Here we are, Batman walking the streets of Gotham. We've got some bad guys, we'll throw some stuff at them. Uh, I think this is actually quite cool, really. We're getting, I don't even know what kind of performance we're getting. I don't think it really matters with this kind of game, but yeah, it just means that you can actually play your old school games as well. And you can fit thousands on this system, particularly older systems like this, because they take up very little space. One of the systems that I did also install, which I thought would be a great test for this, is the PlayStation Portable. Now, the PSP is quite old now, I will admit, but it's going to be interesting to see if it can actually play these types of games. They're a little bit larger, of course, than uh, Sega Mega Drive games, and they're going to take up a bit more space. But if you just stick your favorites on there, it should work perfectly fine. The game is loading up now. It's very quick to be able to do it. Everything's loading really fine. We'll go into start and we'll start a quick race on this and we'll see what happens. We did originally play the original um, flat out, which this is the PSP version on the Windows based system. And we've got around 50 frames per second on average. It didn't look great though, because we had to really lower the settings. So I'm expecting we'll probably get the same type of uh, visual experience here, but maybe a little bit more performance, but let's jump into a game. So we've now loaded into the game. And if I'm honest, it actually looks perfectly fine on the little 10 inch monitor of the laptop. On the big screen, it doesn't look great. It stretches the picture too much really. And you can kind of see how bad it really looks but as long as you've got a small screen you're good to go so far the performance feels very good the 
we've obviously got no uh, FPS counter here. I think you can turn one on in Retro Deck, but I forgot to do it. But so far, everything seems reasonably smooth. There's quite a bit of uh, popping when and kind of like pixely as you go around, but that's probably what the PSP looked like, to be honest. But yeah, you can definitely get away with playing a lot of PSP games on this. I've tried a few on it, and some of them don't work very well with a modern type of controller, to be honest. They only ever gave you one kind of analog stick on the PSP, which I think was one of its biggest faults because it meant first person shooters were very difficult to play but racing games like this of course will play beautifully fine if it plays a psp game like this as well it's got a good chance of playing a playstation one they're very similar in size but you do tend to have a little bit of weirdness from the uh, widescreen to non-widescreen but again if you're a playstation one fan you can fit a bunch of those games on this type of system and play them in your spare time when you're not learning i suppose but yeah, this system plays PSP games. We're having a load of fun with uh, Flat Out here. And as long as you're playing a game like this, I think you're going to get away with it. So there we go. We've now managed to save this system from the tip. It is much faster using a Linux based operating system like Linux Mint. You guys have been recommending it to me for a while now. I, actually, this is the first time I did try it out and I'm super impressed. So thanks for that recommendation. It's really saved this laptop and we can get a lot of games running on it now as well. If it had more storage in it, we could get a lot more games from Steam running on it. I don't think the rest of the hardware is really going to hold it back too much for them older titles but of course the storage most definitely will half-life 2 alone takes up about 10 gigabytes which doesn't leave us a lot of space although the games like half-life 1 and and the kind of add-ons to that only take up about two 300 megabytes so again if you went for those type of games you could get away with putting a lot more on the system but there you go let me know in the comments below what do you think of the system now is this something that you would have done to it or is there a different alternative you would have gone for i'm actually completely happy with this system now it's got gaming it's got emulation we can do all of the things that a normal desktop can do i might even give this laptop to one of my kids and see what they kind of get on with it and see what kind of fun they can have on it don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and i'm sure as always i'll catch you guys in the next one